Okay, um, uh, let us begin. Uh, thanks everyone for, for joining this, uh, this presentation. Uh, so today's webinar is going to be an, an Autocad Electrical to Invent Integration or vice versa. Uh, my name is Aldred Boyd. I'm an application engineer for micrographics. And uh, if you have any questions or anything like that that you'd like to email me after, um, there is my email address. Uh, you know, you can just uh, just email me through that. Okay, so just a, a little bit about myself. Um, I am an industry specialist on the Autodesk manufacturing products. Uh, so that is your, you know, my main my main sort of focus is on Inventor. Uh, but, you know, I've dabbled long in the AutoCAD Electrical, AutoCAD Mechanical, um, also the data management products as well. So the Vault. I don't know if you guys are using the Vault or not, Autodesk Vault. But it does come with uh, with any Inventor or AutoCAD that, that uh, you sort of purchase, um, as well as the product design and manufacturing collections. Um, got around about 18 years of experience, so I've been in the game for a while. Um, so it's been uh, it's been lots of fun, uh, you know, lots of different things to try out. As uh, if you don't know, Autodesk has approximately about 105 or just over 100 uh, different products that they do use or they they do produce. I am both AutoCAD and Inventor certified. So if you don't know about that, there are certification exams that you can take uh, through Autodesk. Um, and that just sort of helps you, you know, along in your career, along just to also see if you are, you know, you know, you know how well you know the product and in which areas you need to improve on or anything like that. I'm also a Autodesk certified instructor. So, so with that, um, you know, we have to take exams and stuff like that to be able to teach, you know, the way Autodesk wants us to teach. So if you do ever come on a training course with me, please know that you are in safe hands. Um, I've also presented at Autodesk University Extension in both Joburg and Cape Town. So those are, you know, before, before pre pre COVID, we used to where well, we had these conferences. I don't know if you have been to one of them, but it's it's actually quite it's quite a nice event where you're actually able to go and then interact with other professionals in the industry and just see who's doing what in in the field that you guys work in um, and how they tackle the day to day uh, problems that you you kind of see. Just on that note, um, I think. In about two weeks' time, if you go to the Autodesk University uh, website, you'll see there they, they're running um, or they're promoting the Autodesk University, which is normally uh, takes place in November in Las Vegas. Um, it's normally, I think, about like $2,000 to to attend, but this year they're actually doing it for free. So um, if you want to see a, a lot of really, really good guys um, presenting some really, really amazing content, um, I really would suggest going to that, uh, registering for it. I think it's four days. Um, where you can actually see, um, you know, sort of a whole lot of different uh, sort of webinars and and classes where you can actually learn a lot, a lot of stuff with guys who've been in the industry for years and years and years, as well as Autodesk um, employees uh, showcasing their skills in that. So I would really implore you to to go to the Autodesk University website um, and go um, enroll for those some of those classes. Okay, so the agenda for today. Um, basically, we're going to take a look at how we're setting up that AutoCAD electrical project to work with Inventor. Okay, so you'll see it's actually quite a quite an easy process. Then, how do we set up our Inventor designs to be able to accept the way we've set up the AutoCAD electrical data? And then just understand the process of design change iteration. So, you know, how, you know, if I change the design in Inventor, uh, what happens, you know, in, in AutoCAD electrical? And if I change anything in AutoCAD electrical, what happens? Um, an inventor and how do we manage those changes and then just also how to manage your inventor and electrical components so obviously you know we've got to create the components um, you know in, in in inventor you know your 3d components or you know take it off the website or you've got to create your components or just take it out of the catalog library or can electrical um, and just how do you manage it so that they both talk to each other so that you don't have um, any issues and have the smoothest workflow possible Okay, so basically, you know, the questions that I get asked when, you know, sort of setting up these kind of environments, you know, like, so are you using Inventor Professional? Yes, or are you using Inventor? So Inventor Professional is the one that has the cable and harness module uh, bolted onto that. Um, Inventor doesn't. So th there were three of the modules, the mold, the cable and harness, and the tube and piping or the routing. So, so with, oh, and, and FEA as well. Um, nowadays, if you do buy Inventor, you actually just get Inventor Professional. Autodesk has actually dropped the Inventor uh, sort of the, the Inventor software, uh, so you just get everything straight off the bat. 
Um, another thing you have to ask, do you create electrical schematic drawings? So maybe someone in, in your, your company is doing that, or maybe you're working with a different company as well, where they're creating electrical drawings. Um, and then, you know, how do you, or are you creating electrical drawings? And then how do you, you know, integrate that tight, tightly with, uh, you know, the, the two designs? You know, someone's doing the manufacturing or the mechanical, you're doing the electrical. How do we get those to talk, um, you know, talk together nicely? Um, and, you know, if, if the situation is that you are using both electrical and doing mechanical design, um, you probably already have AutoCAD Electrical. Um, and the reason I say that is with AutoCAD Electrical, if you've got the product design and manufacturing collections, you have something called the AutoCAD. Well, you, you'll know you have AutoCAD, but did you know that you also have AutoCAD with specialized tool sets? So that's the way that Autodesk sells AutoCAD at the moment. So if you buy a full AutoCAD, you automatically get AutoCAD Vanilla, plus AutoCAD Electrical, AutoCAD Mechanical, AutoCAD Plant, AutoCAD PNID, AutoCAD Map, and AutoCAD Raster Design. So those are all the products that you get automatically without even, you know, sort of having to do any additional admin. So if you've got those two products, you've definitely got AutoCAD Electrical. Okay. So in this, you know, modern design environment, you know, one of the things that does come up um, is that, you know, we have to get things out as quickly as possible. Um, and, and the reason for that is, you know, you know, client wants, wants, clients want their product, you know, like now or yesterday, um, you know, but they always also want to make changes along the way. And the problem with those changes is that if you're working in two separate environments, your electrical environment, your, your mechanical environment, you know, so if someone wants to make a change to the, me the mechanical environment, now you've got to now redo something in the electrical environment and vice versa. And then things just got to, you know, by doing all these redesigns, uh, you know, things kind of get messy and it takes even longer to get the design out. So, you know, you really want to tightly integrate those designs between the mechanical and electrical side so that if a change is made in the one side, you know, you kind of see that change propagate to the other side as well so that you can then more quickly react to what's happening um, in either design environment. Okay. Um, if you're an electrical user or AutoCAD electrical user, or even just an AutoCAD user using it to do electrical work, you don't know what Inventor Professional is. So Inventor is the, the 3D mechanical design product from, from Autodesk. It's our, our flagship product. And what it does is allows us to do parametric design. So, you know, if you think about uh, what, what's the design that we're going to do, how is it going to change, um, you can make that parametric so that you can just, you know, maybe make a couple of changes in what we call the, the parameters table and it'll update the model accordingly. What you can also do is you can automatically create your 2D drawings from that and also your bill of materials, which is quite important as, uh, you know, having to do bill of materials manual is manually um, can be quite tedious. And it's also, you know, when it comes to human error, uh, that now starts getting in the way of, you know, costly errors down the line because, uh, maybe you've ordered something wrong or you've ordered too much or too little or something, and then it increases the lead time or eats into your profit. Um, for those of you who don't use AutoCAD Electrical, um, so this is AutoCAD. So it actually looks like AutoCAD, but your, your ribbon has changed so that the icons match a, a sort of a, an electrical uh, flavor. So what happens is if you're just using AutoCAD for electrical design, going to AutoCAD Electrical, is really, really easy because first of all, you used to the, the, the user interface and it's just basically a drag and drop operation. So in normal AutoCAD, what you do is, you know, start drawing your lines. Maybe you wanted to draw a, um, a ladder um, and start putting components in over there. Um, you know, you have to draw your two vertical lines, maybe draw lines running horizontally across. Um, so as you can see over here in, in the right-hand side of your, this picture, and then you now start dropping in your, um, in your blocks. And with your blocks, you probably set up all your attributes. Um, so that little attribute box pops up when you double click on the box and now you start filling in all your details. Um, so that's the kind of the way that you'd work with, with just normal AutoCAD. Um, now with AutoCAD Electrical, what happens is the ladder, for instance, you know, to, to draw something like this, you just basically set like a ladder. Um, each uh, rung has to be a, a certain distance apart. Then you click at the top, you click at the bottom, and it's just going to go fill in all the ladders, uh, all the rungs for you. Um, also, what it does, it also puts connection points where the wires come together. So either a dot or maybe that little angled, um, you know, sort of line that you've got. And, and when you drop in a, a component, you can actually assign catalog dots, and it's got a whole different little dialog box for you over there. So it just makes the, it much quicker to work with in AutoCAD Electrical. Um, and it also keeps track of parent-child relationships. So you contacts relays, um, you know, you, you click on, on a contact, you right-click, you say, where's, you know, where's the child of this? 
Uh, also, the parents of this will go tell you where the relay is and where it's actually positioned in space on your drawing. And also, the nice thing about AutoCAD Electrical, they'll actually spit out a bill of materials for you as well. So, like Inventor does with, uh, you know, with your, your parts, um, AutoCAD Electrical does as well. Um, you know, and that bill of materials will have your catalog information, and information, description, tag number, all of that as well. And one of the nice things about AutoCAD Electrical as well is that it'll give you, it will automatically wire um, your, your diagram. So you can say, right, wire from you know, page one to page 50, and it will run through that, and it won't duplicate anything. It knows how it's supposed to work. So if you're not using AutoCAD Electrical um, as of yet, and you're still using AutoCAD, um, you know, I implore you, please, go to AutoCAD Electrical. It's going to be the best decision you've uh, made uh, this year so far. Okay, so um, up to, I think, about two or three years ago, um, there was an AutoCAD Electrical integration, an event integration, but it was very manual. Um, it works with an XML file import and export. And on the left-hand side of here, you'll see that that's AutoCAD Electrical. You'll see there's an import export data tab. And you can export that out to, to Inventor. So you either do the project or you do the active drawing. Um, and then you save it out. And then you'd go into Inventor. And then you basically will you know, browse for it and you'll bring it back in again. And the problem with this is, well, there's no real problem, but it's, it's manual. Uh, there's no live link. So if anything happens, you must remember to export out the changes and import it back into Inventor um, or vice versa. So, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where um, if, if I do forget to, to export the XML file and everything goes through to manufacture because it's ready, there can be mistakes that creep up uh, later in the, in the process. Okay. So in the new uh, AutoCAD Electrical, there's something called an EMX file. Okay. Um, and to do that, to, to create this EMX file, uh, you navigate to the electromechanical tab, okay? And the nice thing about this, the setup is only one button, okay? There's nothing else there. On that, on that ribbon, there's only one button, and you just click on that, and it'll bring up this electromechanical link setup. And you can either create a, a new link, or you can link to an existing link. Now, link to the existing link is you can also create this setup from Inventor as well. But I, I would suggest, you know, the, the, it works much better um, if you create it in the in AutoCAD Electrical uh, for this. Okay. So this EMX file, what does it do? So it will link the 2D schematic to the 3D model and vice versa. Um, the one thing about this is it synchronizes synchronizes the project dots in real time. Okay, so um, you can set up a time schedule, so sync every 30 minutes or every hour, or there is a manual sync as well. So, you know, once you've done that, this, this uh, file will go sit in a folder somewhere and both Inventor and AutoCAD Electrical will have access to it and, and link to that. Um, one thing about your, uh, your electrical, um, uh, you know, your electrical designs is when you're doing your schematic, you don't know the real length of, of a wire. So, so what you're doing is you're saying, okay, right, I think we need from the last project, we need like maybe 100 meters of wire. Um, so let's, you know, order that maybe plus 10%, 110 meters of wire, and then you find out that you only need 70. So now you've wasted, uh, you know, 40, 40 meters of wire, and, and all that money has got to, you know, it's got to come from somewhere. So um, by, by using this link between electrical and, and inventor, you're now sort of getting a more accurate uh, estimate of actually how long, how much wiring you need to purchase so that you aren't cutting into your profits. Another thing it allows for is that the properties between AutoCAD Electrical and an inventor, um, they kind of, uh, you know, they are synced or they, they are the same. Um, a lot of the times what happens is I've got my physical uh, electrical component in inventor and I got put in my I properties. So description, tag number, part number, et cetera. And on my electrical side, I do the same thing. So now if you're two different people doing this, um, you know, errors do come up because if you haven't standardized uh, your naming convention, um, those errors will pop up. So if you, for instance, with this EMX file, you just say, okay, right, the electrical guys are going to be putting in tag numbers, which then translates your part numbers and a description, and we use that EMX link uh, between the two, we can then start standardizing on naming convention and also the information that's presented uh, when we start pulling out reports and when we also start pulling out bill of materials as well. Another thing it does is, uh, if you ever played with uh, an inventor with your 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 roots, your 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 wires, uh, you'll know that you have to set up your pins, and now you start clicking on 
pin one, pin two, pin one, pin two, from this component to that component. And what it does is if you've done all your wiring in, in AutoCAD Electrical, it actually carries all that wiring into Inventor automatically. So that's a nice way to, to also just cut down on time um, when doing the designs instead of doing everything manually. Okay. So back to setting up the AutoCAD Electrical. So once we've clicked on the AutoCAD Electrical button and say set up, um, it brings us up over here. Um, you'll give it a name. And that shared folder must be accessible to both the Inventor and the AutoCAD Electrical user. Uh, because obviously, so if you're working on a network, um, you know, maybe create that shared folder on the on on a server somewhere, um, so that you can both see that as well. It gives you a lovely little message over there. Congratulations, your your link has been successfully created, um, and then that's it. So that is all you need to do. So it's click create electromechanical link, type in your file name, specify your shared folder, and then click on close. After you've done that, it'll test, just give you a sort of a brief overview of exactly what, um, what's happened. So it gave the link file path, the name, the shared folder, but it won't give you your connected Inventor project yet or your assembly because we, remember we're still working in AutoCAD Electrical. So it needs to then, you know, we're going to have to still go and link it, you know, choose that EMX file that we've created from within Inventor as well. At the bottom there, you'll see there's a link conflict resolution preference. So you can either, if, if, if I put in information, sort of description in my inventor part, and the description is different in my AutoCAD electrical part, what takes preferences, preference, you know, who overrides who? So, so that's kind of the decision that you, you know, make internally. Um, I, I would, you know, my, my preference is always AutoCAD electrical to Autodesk Inventor, over Autodesk Inventor. So, but if you do need to change, you can during the project as you're working, just say, okay, right, I've made a change in Autodesk Inventor. Um, let's, you know, and it needs to be overridden, over, you know, overwritten because maybe the guys on holiday or something like that, but this project needs to go out tomorrow. So then you say, right, um, send over the, 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 you know, override Inventor uh, over electrical over there. Okay. Okay, so now we're done with the, the AutoCAD electrical and now we move into the Inventor environment. So with the event environments, um, it, this only works in assembly. So if you open up a, a part, you will not see that electromechanical tab um, that you that you get. And basically, you're just going to link it up. So at the top over there, you'll see that highlighted uh, sort of button at the top right. That's the link button. Um, the one on the left, the grayed out one, is, is create. So as I said, you can create an EMX file from within Inventor, but it's more preferable to create it in AutoCAD Electrical. And then it'll tell you what it's linking to. Um, any inventor assemblies is linking to as well. So it can link to more than, than one inventor assembly. Now it picks up your inventor project that you're working with, and it also tells you the link config resolution. So, so this, so we see over there, Autodesk Inventor, you can tick that over there as well. So you are able to go and change that uh, conflict resolution preference. Once that's happened, you'll see there, it actually activates a location view. Okay, so before that, that location view button would have been grayed out um, before you linked it, and now it's available to you. So, and what this location view does, it, this interprets the electrical data within Inventor, and it tells you sort of which are the electrical components coming from AutoCAD Electrical, which are the Inventor parts that have already res that already reside in Inventor, and how they're linked, and um, you know if they're linked correctly. Um, so the next part you'll see over here is, uh, you know, the, the blue block in the left-hand corner over there. That is a, an inventor component, and the little white uh, electrical symbol. That's that's the symbol coming from the AutoCAD electrical components. And if you right-click on the inventor component, you won't actually get any options. I think it'll just that's uh, expand and collapse the browser. If you right-click on the electrical components, you'll get those five options over there. So um, if you work from your catalog browser, okay. Uh, you can set up, I don't know if you've seen in order, if you guys work on AutoCAD Electrical, in your catalog browser, you'll see that there's actually a 3D um, sort of part uh, column. So you can go and link in your catalog browser any 3D parts that you download from the, um, you know, from the manufacturer's website. And then um, in Inventor, when you're setting it up, there is an option to install the, the electrical catalog browser. And if you browse to the, the same, um, a database file, you are then able to share that information. So if I bring in a, a, a relay, for instance, 
okay? Or like I bring in a motor, for instance, or something like that, and I, I link up the 2D um, schematic with the 3D component, um, I can say, you know, I can say you know, insert from catalog browser, it'll go find it and actually bring in that 3D component. Um, and it'll have all the same data, your catalog data, your inf um, your um, uh, descriptions, you know, how many normally normally open, normally closed. You've got, so, so all of that stuff as well, all the residing, and it's both accessible from both electrical and inventor. You can also, if you've just brought in a dummy model, you can also just assign to something existing in the assembly. So, you know, you can draw up a block because maybe you just want to see the, um, the, the dimensions of the overall dimensions of it because you need to put spacing in the, the casing or the housing that you've got. And you can just say, right, this electrical component is actually that block sitting over there. So it doesn't have to take the exact shape of what it's going to look like in real life, but it can go and just take like sort of the, the general surrounds. If you find that, you know, something's gone wrong or something like that, you can unlink the components. And then the create connection is actually creating the wiring. So all the wire, wires that you've done in AutoCAD Electrical, that will then go and wire everything if you create connection. And then you've just got your electrical properties as well over there. So if you need to change that uh, from a push button to a relay or anything like that. So after you've said assign to, um, you know, sort of a component in your assembly, this is what it looks like. So it'll go take all the pins that you've got and it will try and connect, um, you know, in the shortest route. So you still after this have to go and put it into a, a segment somewhere. Um, as I said over there, you can right click and create connections. So that's the um, pulling in all the wires from, from that. Okay, sometimes things do go wrong, okay? So for instance, if you've authored the component in Inventor and you've authored it wrong, so now you're trying to map a push button in electrical to maybe a relay in Inventor, it'll, it'll give you an error. And you saw those electrical properties over there. So this is what pops up. So um, it'll tell you the installation location, and then you've got there your category. So you can just go and change the category to what it's actually supposed to be. Um, and that manufacturer catalog assembly code, that can get pushed in from AutoCAD Electrical as well. Or what you can do is you can go and look up from the catalog database that you've got going in there. And then obviously, if you're bringing everything from AutoCAD Electrical over, it'll you know fill in that description line one line two line three so if you have used autocad electrical before this should be very familiar to you uh, because this is kind of the stuff that's you know that we have to fill in um, every single time for the inventor guys this is not so familiar um but this as i said this is the guys that this is the stuff that the uh, autocad electrical guys need to look at when filling out all the information for their components yeah um on the wire side um, you might get an error message that says, sorry, but I can't find uh, any wires in your cable and harness library. Um, I'm just going to use a generic wire. And the reason for that is, is that the, the names of the cable and harness library of the wires there do not exactly match your wire type or your, your wire layer name. So at the top over there, you see in my cable and harness library in Inventor, I've got 10AWG slash BLK. And you must create another a wire name, 10AWG uh, slash BLK in electrical. So they have to be the same. If, as I said, if they're not the same, um, it's going to start spitting out errors. Okay. So once you've done that, you can create your segment. Okay. So you can see they have rooted all the way along the side. Um, and by doing that, you just, you know, dropping down work points and then um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, just clicking on the work points and, and putting it through there. And then you'll see it will route it through. Um, I just normally automatically route wires and it will just try and find the closest segments to, to the wires um, and just route everything through, through that. If it doesn't, uh, or if you do not want it to route and it has to route through a different segment for whatever reason, you can say, look, I'd like this wire in the segment and it, you can manually route it through over there. Sometimes what you'll do is you'll get something like this. So those wires look quite funny on the components. Okay, so it kind of looks like it's, you know, it's not you know, coming in normal or straight into the pins. It's kind of coming in sideways um, or even from the back. So for this, you, you need to edit the component, okay, and just go to the Manage tab and go to Author Connector. So if you've ever authored, um, you know, components for your, your um, content center, uh, you'll know about the component or achievement pipe if you've done that. So there is another connector uh, component over there. So if you go to the connector author, this dialog box will pop up over here. And you you basically 
uh, you just we're with those settings over there. Click on the face where that green arrow is, um, and then it says, "Look, you've got to come in normal to this face when you when you do your wiring." So at least then the wire looks looks a bit better, um, and you know it's also a bit more realistic because that's how the wire would come in, um, and would give you a bit of a a more accurate length wiring. Okay. So what happens when when we do design changes? Okay. So design changes, in, in I would talk about in Inventor would be something like deleting or adding wires, deleting or adding components. Um, so that's what you do. And then what you do is if you want that information to go from Inventor through to AutoCAD Electrical, you must remember to click on that change conflict resolution preference. Okay, so that's if you, you want to want to make it move uh, to AutoCAD Electrical. Once that's done, to bring those changes into uh, AutoCAD Electrical, um, you, you will see that um, the, in your location view, um, you will be able to insert anything that's that's not already available in your um, in your vertical electrical design. So by adding wires, it is still a bit of a manual process. So you know it's not going to automatically add wires um, in in Inventor, but it will tell you that there is a discrepancy between vertical electrical and um, an Inventor. So then you'll just have to go and manually put that in. And any non-connector components, you'll have to just insert from your catalog or icon browser. So it's still a bit of a manual process between the two. But what that EMX file is doing is it's telling you that there have been changes um, and it'll tell you what's missing and what's not missing uh, in your design. Okay. So this over here is, is just what, what you'll see when you try and bring in a connector that, um, that has maybe been placed in addition in Inventor. So at the bottom of here, you'll see hide placed. So it'll actually give you a list of all the connectors that you've got in AutoCAD Electrical, uh, which have already been placed in both Inventor and Electrical. And these ones are just um, the connectors that are sitting in Inventor that have been wired, but are not in your AutoCAD Electrical design. It tells you total pins and the wired pins as well. Um, and then what you need to do is you, obviously, if you worked with the connectors before, just see what your orientation is going to be. You can select all four of these as well. And then after clicking in, um, you know, after placing it, it will then place it one after the other. And then what you'll have to do from there is go and, and wire it up. Okay. Or what you can do is you click on wire it and it will go wire um, what it can from what you've wired in Inventor. Okay. okay. And vice versa, if you make a change to AutoCAD Electrical, like deleting or adding wires, deleting or adding components, uh, if the conflict resolution preference is invented to AutoCAD Electrical, you just change it again then from Inventor to Electrical, um, and then you go through that whole process from what we've gone from the beginning. So basically, open location view, uh, remember to click your sync button. Um, if the conflict resolution has changed, you must accept that, and then uh, you revise your assembly to suit the changes. Okay. Add any new components, either from your catalog browser or if you've actually downloaded something from the website, uh, from the manufacturer's website and inserted it. Create your new wires, uh, which will probably be automatically from AutoCAD Electrical. Um, and then just insert your new harness segment and then auto route your wires. Okay. Now, just in this design change, uh, you know, either from electrical to inventor or inventor to electrical, uh, what is the best way? I would say that the best way to do it is let let the design change for anything electrical come from electrical. That's what it is made for. Um, you know, you know, rather for inventor, do the housing, do the positioning of, of your components. Um, but all the information and the wires need to, I would say, need to come from Autica Electrical. You know, just keep it simple. Um, you know, because if you now try to start to move from one to the other and start changing preferences, I, I know that things can get confusing and, and you know, things could get muddled up. So, so from from basically, you know, from my experience, is uh, when working with this this workflow, get everything to come from the electrical guy, and let that information flow into the into Inventor. And then when you do the bill of materials, so I don't have a slide for this, of, uh, but when you do do the, just remember this. So when you do do the bill of materials, do the bill of materials from AutoCAD Electrical. The reason for that is it will pick up all the electrical components, plus there's also an option to pick up the inventor components as well. So, so when you want to do a full bill of materials, 
you uh, do it in electrical because it because you can get uh, the emx file does transmit the length of your wires from inventor through to autocad electrical so when you do that bill of materials you'll get your length of wire plus there's an option to to um drag in the components from inventor and and put it in over there okay and basically you know oh sorry um, so then managing your inventor electrical components, uh, just a few tips to, or, you know, just a few things to, to take note of. Um, I showed you about the authoring components. Rather author your components instead of just assigning pins, okay? Um, you know, that just gives it more realism. The wires come in correctly, um, and you just got more control of it. What you can also do is you can author, the, author those components into your content center. So, you know, when you're in your, your, um, your assembly, you're now just saying place from content center and bring it in that way. Um, also, why names? Why names? Please, they must match exactly. You know, if they don't match exactly, then you are going to start getting errors, um, and that can frustrate you because now instead of designing and getting this tight integration, you, most of your your work and time is taken into trying to resolve issues between um, you know information between the two different packages. Um, and then just also please make sure that the electrical catalog browser is installed um, and both Inventor and your AutoCAD Electrical are pointing to the same catalog. And by doing that, um, you can then basically get, uh, you know, the same information, the same description, catalog number, manufacturer, all of that uh, in both packages. Okay, and that's just the basic gist of, of how to take your AutoCAD Electrical and integrate it into Inventor and vice versa. Um, are there any questions? If your microphone is muted, you can just yeah, just uh, go to the audio tab and just click off that, or you're more than welcome to type into the chat bar at the bottom. Can I ask, are, are you guys, are you using both AutoCAD Electrical and Inventor or just maybe AutoCAD and Inventor or, you know, no Inventor and just AutoCAD Electrical or AutoCAD? Okay, great. Uh, yes, we do offer training in Pretoria, yes. Okay, so we have offices all over there. If you want, uh, you can email me. I'll just type the email address here. And um, and then I can uh, sort of get quotes and dates and times uh, for any training that you guys do want. Uh, we do also offer remote training as well. So if you, you know, with obviously COVID and stuff like that, if you want remote training, the remote training, um, you know, uh, as well as at your office as well. And yeah, that's all the questions. Thank you very much, guys, for attending. Um, I, yeah, as I said, if you do have any questions, you know, while thinking about it during the day or next week, uh, you're more than welcome to, to email me um, and I'll answer any questions that, that you'd like to see. Great. Thank you very much. Hope you guys have an awesome Friday and a great weekend. Cool. Thanks. Cheers.